Hello, everybody. Welcome to yet another edition of The Wrap-Up. Dan Myers, Nick Buckler, episode numero 68. That's right. We're one away from the big fiesta, my friends. And let me tell you something, Dan. The Olympic Games are happening right now. Speaking of a big fiesta. Fiesta del Rio. Uh, there's been a lot of scrutiny coming from Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. That was a really bad version of an accent, but good. I gave it the old college try. Uh, the, the highlight of this Olympic Games has to be Michael Phelps, hands down. Um, 23 gold medals in his Olympic career, and just absolutely dominating at the age of 31 years old. And uh, I think it was five more golds this year. Uh, just absolutely incredible, Dan. I, I don't know, I want your take on this, because he's, he's really taken it by the horns, and he's announced that this will be his final Olympics, although he said that in two prior Olympic Games, but I, I really think he's sincere this year. He'd be 35 coming back, and I think that's a little bit too old to be competing uh, at a high level. Yeah, uh, terrific athlete. Uh, it's, he's pretty much the epitome of a uh, bounce back from a negative incident, uh, especially a couple years ago with the, the drug incident, which, you know, it, America's always looking for a comeback story. But, uh, yeah, I thought it was terrific. He's just, he's, he's a freak. He really is. He's, uh, I mean, I, I get claustrophobic watching that guy swim underwater for so long. I can never do that. Not that many people can, but uh, you really got to admire the guy to be as, as fast as he was uh, with those reloys, that uh, all-around relay. Reloys. Keeping it refreshed. <laughs> uh, he was Rolls doing a terrific Royce. job. Uh, and yeah, he's, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he came back, but he is, he is getting up there by, you know, traditional Olympic athlete standards of age. Um, but I mean, he could, he's got a great time to go out well, with uh, these strong winds and with that medal count, who knows? He might want to keep building it up. I mean, if he can, why not? Let, let me just give you a fun fact here. He passed Leonidas's record from the year <laughs> 250 BC for most career gold medals. Leonidas. That's something you hear when you're like looking at the hydroglyphics or whatever they're called that the, the old folk used to engrave into their caves. Like, that's Leonidas time. Yeah. We're talking about history being made right under our noses in our time on our televisions right here 2000 the year 2000 was when he began at the age of 15 let's fast forward 16 years later he's 31 and still doing it although he didn't win any medals uh, a gold in 2000 it, so really this is a matter of 12 years mm -hmm. 2004 through 2008 2012 and now here in 2016 Michael Phelps is the best Olympian of all time. And before we get into more Olympic coverage, I got a tweet today. Someone had said that Michael Phelps is not the greatest athlete of all time, which, okay, that's fine and dandy, my friends. You can have your opinion all you want. But then that same person went ahead and said, the Olympic Games needs to go away forever. <sighs> if Here anyone's got a brown paper <laughs> bag, I'm going to need it, and I'm going to need it quick. Because this is just pandemonium. You are saying that the oldest sporting event worldwide, that the ancient Greeks or Romans or whoever started, back in Pompeii days, cities covered by ash and cement and lava. They had Olympic Games. They have continued that every two years, four years for summer, four years for winter, each one, every two, get the point. Okay, go away forever. And I said, Ex excuse me, sir, <laughs> explain. Well, no one cares about those sports until the Olympics, which, which is true. Are you gonna go watch the 100 meter relay? at home on a Friday night when you got, you could be at a high school football game or maybe the Red Wings are in town. Uh, Ryan Lochte's, uh, <laughs> he's gonna be in the uh, breaststroke, 100 meter, gotta stay in tonight, guys. No, that's fine, I agree. But when it's on, every four years, you're glued. Hey, Phelps is racing at 10.04 for history. I'm glued. Oh, the gymnastic team, Allie Raceman, which, <laughs> hey girl. Uh, <laughs> she's going at it at whatever time, Simone, Whatever, Biles. Biles. She's great. Doesn't matter what her last name is. She's, the, she's a freak. These people are representing our country. And you want them to just go away. Well, they'll still compete in their gymnastic routine. 
Yeah, but they're not ever going to they're not going to be in the spotlight. Who's going to care? No one. When they are in international spotlight, that is just incredible. Well, they're taking steroids. They're having unfair advantage. There's steroids available across the world. All right? If you tell me America's the only country that's doing roids, you're on some other stuff. And uh, after the show, get me out back, you know what I'm saying? I could get on your level. <laughs> just kidding. It's illegal. However, it just it, it doesn't make sense to me. The Olympic Games to go away. No. Dan, l- just give me something to work with. It's here. a pretty dubious uh, conversation, but you know, you and I were also talking about is the fact that I liked. You know, if we're if we're gonna have like a competition and they're gonna be steroiding, you know what? Just let them all steroid. It's something that comes around four years. It could be, you know, a battle of superheroes. I mean, I honestly think that'd be incredible to watch. Uh, obviously, we can't do it in our professional sports, especially the big four. But uh, I think it'd be completely entertaining to see these guys just juice up as much as they could and just have these pretty much borderline superheroes running around the Olympic Village. Uh, <laughs> although then again, that might not be too good either. Cause with the uh, roids comes the rage. And uh, they might not make it to the events, but either way, uh, I, you know, I, I have to agree with the statement of the fact that you know we this is traditionally something we don't really care about. We're not going to flip on ESPN and see how they're doing. Uh, college, the college obviously has got the big events like the track and the, the swimming and stuff like that, and the gymnastics. But uh, when it does come down to you know representing your country, I think that's it's something to be very proud of. And I mean, anytime something's represent your country's representing something, whether it's a sports or whatever, you you're going to pay t- you're going to pay attention. You you're going to care. So apparently I, some people don't care. Yeah. And if if you don't care, step up. Come on, there's a seat here. Dan would happily move. <laughs> and let that seat be warm by someone with a very strong opinion that I will put in their place live on the wrap up. Live. We've never done live. We'll do it just for you. All right, people. The Olympics should go away. You know what? Mr. Twitter you should go away talking about our games like that. Not really. That's an offensive <laughs> statement. I don't mean it. <laughs> However, this, that's just, damn. <laughs> oh, damn. Saved me. Yeah. You know what saved me last night? I was getting ready to go to bed after Allie Raceman's speech with her interview with Bob Costas, which, huh, hey, already said that once I'll say it again she was great (laughs) let me tell you she won the silver I thought she was personally a little bit better than Simone but they're both great gold silver it doesn't matter interchangeable Uh, the interview was even better they're real they're real people folks I gave her a follow on Twitter still waiting for that follow back I'll give it a you know she's real busy she's busy winning doing us proud however so I'm getting ready to go to bed and then uh, well, the United States is challenging uh, Brazil in uh, the semifinals for the beach volleyball. And I was like, eh, okay, whatever. And then they show Team Brazil. I'm like, I'm in. <laughs> Bed, you can wait. <laughs> I am watching this. Because of the sport, the sport of beach volleyball, it's a great sport. I play it on the beach, mm-hmm. right? Lake here on to my right, a net in front of me, some wilderness to my left. It's so peaceful. You get sand in all sorts of crevices. It's great. But when you watch people with as much talent as those Brazilians, talent. (laughs) Whew. Let's just say I was watching all three sets. All right. And uh, went to bed with a smile, even though Team USA did not come out on top. We all were winners when we were watching that, let me tell you that. Uh, Walsh, Jennings, and Ross were at it again. Uh, Didn't have enough. They'll be in the bronze medal game against another Brazilian team, which, (laughs) hey, might have to tune on in. Uh, I think they're too old, Dan. Uh, go away. Not the whole Olympic Games. <laughs> Don't say, no, nope, hold the phones. Just them. They gave it a good run. Let's turn it over to some younger women that we can all tune on into and root on for their skill on the court. Yes. And uh, that, that's all I'm asking. Uh, I don't know if you have any comment. If yeah. not, I'll I think it was on. a good segue from the Michael Phelps, whether he's getting too old to play, to yeah, to here's women. a prime example of, you know, sometimes it's your time to, you know, hang him up or whatever. And, uh, you know, when she was, uh, Carrie Walsh, what, Carrie Walsh, uh, Walsh and Jennings, Walsh Jennings and then uh, Misty May Trainer, that, that duel was unstoppable and it was clearly apparent in the past couple Olympics. Uh, but you but can Misty tell that. Misty May Trainer retired on top. Yes. Walsh Jennings is, uh, 
She's, uh, I think she's halfway there. Whoa, whoa, she's living on a prayer. Uh, the prayer, they have not been answered this year. Looks yeah. like they're gonna take a bronze. It's still a medal Which is for our country. Yeah. And that's all that matters. But I mean, some of the, the competition that they were actually giving some pretty stiff competition out there. Uh, I can't remember the team exactly. Maybe it's Sweden or something. Uh, this lady was easily pushing 45, which you know was incredible shape at her, especially for that age. Um, and they def definitely gave him some competition. Uh, but I think when the tank's running low, it's time to hang them up before you do too much harm. And I think it's apparent this year, why not go out semi on top, you know, with, with a bronze medal? But you know, it's she's had a great run, ter terrific one run that she should be proud of. And uh, yeah, I think that should be it. We'll get some new talent in there. Another thing I want to talk about about the Olympics is Rio. It's a questionable city to have the Olympics in, no doubt. Uh, Ryan Lochte was uh, robbed at gunpoint on a beach in Rio uh, with three other United States swimmers. Uh, the first, the committee was like, eh, "This isn't true," and then they, you know, backtracked and confirmed. Ryan Lochte is back home, and the others, the other passports are on hold at customs. So Lochte was able to sneak back, um, and it was confirmed by his father. He is back home in the United States. Listen, they got out of there as fast as they could. Oh, absolutely. That must yeah. have been just a, after they took their golds uh, to get robbed at gunpoint. That, that's something you never forget. It's pretty terrifying. And uh, that would make me not want to go back to an Olympic Games. Uh, but that, that's just another thing with picking these third world countries to host one of the biggest events in the world. Uh, it's just, it's questionable by the committee. Uh, hey, maybe we got a shot after all, am I right? Yeah, right? Yeah. Which was kind of, it's kind of not fascinating, but uh, you know, a lot of people are speculating that. A lot of these uh, not crime lords, but bosses, you know, threw some cutbacks or cutbacks to uh, these taxi cab drivers, and they'd say, you know, when you pick them up, we're gonna pull you over. We'll give you, you know, half the cut or whatever, like whatever they get from these uh, poor victims. And uh, they're seeming to think that that's was uh, Lochte's problem, and he got caught up in the middle of that, which is pretty terrifying, and which is another risk of having a with a low security country is somebody that doesn't really have their balance, uh, you know, economically. That's uh, gonna happen. Not to mention uh, Zika. Yes. No cases uh, so confirmed far. yet. Still a couple days left. They have a well, green pool though, so. They do have a green pool. <laughs> My neighbor has one. <laughs> right. Yeah, you know, he claims it's algae, but I, <laughs> I've been inside their house. It's no such thing. You know what? I'm gonna go get some chlorine and shower to just, uh, just kind of take precautions. Dan, yeah, you know what? We'll be right back. Welcome back, welcome back, Dan, welcome back, welcome back to the wrap-up. That's right, we're back. Uh, the Tigers, maybe not so much. Dan, uh, they won eight in a row, not too long ago, 10 of 11. Uh, and then the wheels, they fell right on off the bus. It's uh, <laughs> headed for the Detroit River. All aboard, we're going down. Uh, you know, Fall Out Boy said it best. They were going down in an earlier round. I don't think the round could come soon enough. Uh, look at this list of injuries, and by look, I mean listen to me, I'm about to tell it to you. <laughs> uh, Nick Castellanos was hitting over 300, his career year, gone. Cameron Mabin, guy's made of glass, injured, who knows, he probably just got re-injured, he's on the DL, gone. H Jose Iglesias, injured a hamstring, I believe, or something, gone, 15 day DL. Miguel Cabrera, day to day, who knows how long he's going to be out with a bicep injury. Zimmerman comes back, it's lit up, gone, back to the DL. Mike Pelfrey, he might be better injured than he was not injured. He's gone to the DL. Uh, but the Tigers did make a move to try to shore up that utility position, uh, fill in shortstop, 
until Iglesias comes back. Uh, they trade for Eric Ibar to the Atlanta Braves. They give up Mike Avilas and a minor league catcher from single A, uh, class A Lakeland. Uh, I, I like this move, Dan. Uh, definitely gives them someone who's not brain dead at, at the dish. Uh, and Avilas was, I think, a little bit of that. And this, this guy is hitting only 242 on the air, but he's 313 since the All-Star break, been playing every day. Uh, I think it's an upgrade, but is it going to be enough to uh, keep them in the hunt for the Central and the wild card? I'm not sure, Dan. Right. Uh, I, honestly, I don't think that's the, the, the real problem there. The real problem is the, the bullpen that just hasn't been s- uh, solid at all this year. Um, it's really been blowing it. Uh, aside from you know this horrible strain of injuries that they have, unfortunately, um, you know, and some bad signings. You know, the, the Mark Lowe signing I thought was that was great. I wasn't happy with that. I don't know why. Eleven million dollars. High ERA is good, right? High yeah, over better. a half a season though. You know, ten. Yeah, ERA is ten. But I, I wasn't ten. happy with that. I'm not happy with obviously our big performer is not happening. <laughs> Mark Lowe, Justin Wilson. Justin Wilson. Twitter's <laughs> chiming in. Uh, Mark Lowe and Justin Wilson. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, brutal. Yeah. The eighth inning guys. Yeah, they're they're tearing it up. And the top I should of call up Joe Jimenez. That, I mean, Joe Jimenez, that would be a valid point. Thank you, Twitter voice. <laughs> um, Joe Jimenez has been tearing it up. He started in Class A, then he went to Double A, uh, virtually unhittable, goes to Triple A, and he's still putting up some eye-popping numbers. Uh, what would it hurt? Brad Osmus' uh, excuse was, it would stunt his growth and maybe kill his confidence. Listen, Brad, I got news for you, all right? You're on the verge of missing the playoffs for the second straight year, mm-hmm. and that's not something we do here in Detroit, all right? right. We have a demanding population, uh, a front office that I th- feel like wants to win. Illich, he's had his Stanley Cups. He, the Tigers are his first love. He wants a World Series before it's his time. And uh, I think they're trending in the wrong direction. Right. I did say a few weeks ago, I think they'll win the Central. I'm going to have to retract that statement. They're not winning anything. They can't even win a game. That wild card's pretty tough between Boston, Toronto, and Baltimore. I don't think I Houston's think it's even knock, out. knock, knock yeah. on Evan's door. I mean... <laughs> It's bad. <laughs> I think the Tigers are knock, knock, knock into the south. Hey, uh, Satan, you got any room down there? Stick <laughs> a fork in them. Because they done. Uh, you know, it's just, yeah. hey, Satan, you there? It's Brad Osmus. Yeah, that's right. I put Mark Lowe in again. You, gonna, <laughs> you got a spot for me? Warm up the seat. Yeah, because he's on the hot seat. If yeah. this guy has a job here next year, I'm picking a new team. We'll start talking about, like, the Blue Jays or something. I don't care. It, and I'm pretty sure going into the season, you and I were, uh, you especially, we weren't too happy with no. the fact that he was coming back. Um, it's it's unfortunate, and I, I don't know how it's going to stun his gro- growth personally. I, you know, the, the team needs it. I'm pretty sure he's, he's done growing. Yeah. How old is he? Yeah, Eight, right. 19, 20? <laughs> yeah. I don't think this guy's growing anymore. And uh, the experience can do nothing but help somebody. You know, that's what I was under the impersonation of. But you know, we're just we're just two talk show hosts that no one really knows. Uh, you know, it, it just it makes me think, gee, what would Leland have done? Yep. Blown his brains out. <laughs> <laughs> well, a cigarette? Yeah, you would have he had probably, a couple packs. Marlboro Reds would have been flowing. They would have had discount packages. Um, but th- that's all hearsay. Uh, what what would have happened? What would have this done? What would have that done? Moral of the story, you heard it here first. Again, they're done. They will not make the playoffs. I'm changing my ways. Who could have predicted these injuries and this streakiness? Uh, they can't beat the Royals, who are just abysmal right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's bad. It's sad. You can only score. I mean, you got Casey Magoo McGee playing third base. This is just like this. Just like they found this dude that's sitting at the bar. <laughs> Doesn't he look like he drives his Ford F-150 from 1999 with a Confederate flag out sticking out of the back? Don't tread on me. Uh, he's drinking a PBR with his rifle. <laughs> Uh, I can play some third base, I reckon. Uh, put me on in, Tigers. Um, I'm Brad Osmus. I think he's, uh, yeah, why not? Sign Cassiano, him up. Cassiano's is hurt. I think we should uh, give, give this Magoo guy a chance. Uh, it's McGee. That's fine. Magoo. Here's the contract. McGee. Just sign it right there sign and you're him. MLB star. All right, let me just. All right, does that count? I reckon it does. This guy's a joke. But he hit, he hit 292 in AAA Toledo. That's fine. Helen <laughs> Keller's throwing him the ball. All right? Let's be real. This will be back next year. All right, Twitter. You just <laughs> lost your talking privileges. All right. He just said, if you didn't hear, Osmus will be back. Let's cut, cut this guy's <laughs> mic. If he's back, I tell, I tell you right now, 
What day? August 17th, 2016. Nick says, if Osmus is back next year, we will no longer cover the Tigers, and I will burn everything Tigers I have live in studio, and we will become a Toronto Blue Jays team. Me and Dan. Dan, you have no say. That's happening. I think we're going to have to burn it outside just due to uh, insurance reasons, but... But we will have an outside burning of Tigers merch if you guys want to show up. Come on out. We'll sell tickets. To, we'll, the proceeds will go directly to my wallet. Um, <laughs> it'll be a great time. Uh, but let's just hope we don't have to get there. So we're a peaceful duo. You know, I want I want to believe that that's what's going to happen. But Twitter's really, really he lost starting. It. To, I don't want him to speak. It's again. sneaking back. I, I. How long have you been dealing with Stafford? I think we might have the same issue with. No, 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 no. Don't. Listen, Stafford's at least serviceable. Brad Osmus is like brain dead. Yeah. For the amount of times this guy puts a 200 hitter in the number two spot, makes me want to just curl up in a ball and just bury me alive. Uh, you know what? <laughs> I can't talk about Tigers anymore. Let's talk. Da -da -da -da, forward down the field. The Lions. Preseason underway. They uh, they win. Yes. Yeah. When it doesn't matter. Remember they went four and zero in the preseason regular season. Oh, that season go. In sixteen. <laughs> Only team in history to do that. Hey, we got you. I see you. Um, but there's definitely promise and from positions that we thought we weren't going to get promise from, like the backup quarterback position, Jake Rudock. I'm mm -hmm. pulling for this guy. I'm not a Dan Orlovsky no. fan. I would love if Rudock got the backup gig. Is it realistic? Maybe not. I just hope they'll carry three quarterbacks to give this guy some experience in practice, whatnot. Uh, I think he's definitely got a pro-style background to him. Maybe I'm just a homer because I watched him last year in Michigan. I'm not sure. But, I mean, he had the second most yardage in a single season of all time at the University of Michigan. Mm -hmm. The only person ahead of him was Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that, that's good, pretty good impressive. Good field to be in. And it was a quiet, calm, you know, 3,000-plus yards. Uh, and he looked great against Florida in the bowl game. He deserves a chance. Am I saying start him over Stafford? Absolutely not. Stafford's still one of five quarterbacks of all time to throw for 5,000 yards in a year. I say this is his make or break year. You've said it too in past shows. We've said that past couple seasons, but I think Bob Quinn, he gets a full year with Jim Bob Cooter. Uh, and let's be honest, he had the number one fantasy number production from a quarterback in the weeks Jim Bob Cooter was the offensive coordinator last season. Hmm. Mind you, was it pretty? No, they did a lot of screens, quick slants, but it was yards after contact. Look at Golden Tate. How many times did he get hit and spin out of it? His juking. Theo Riddick is one of the most underrated players on this roster. His, the amount of jukes and dipsy doos and yards after contact this guy has is unreal. He averaged 7.7 .7 yards after contact last season. If that's not near the top, especially for a running back, I don't know what is. This guy's a great guy on third down. Line him up in the slot. You could have Abdullah in the backfield and put them both out there at the same time and utilize them. Um, the defense, to me, is still sketchy, that secondary. Uh, they did pick up Raphael Bush uh, to fill the void where uh, um, James Ahadibo was last year. You lose Rasheen Mathis, which that's fine. Uh, that guy was... Did you hear that? Yep. Yep. A thousand. Yeah, I was going to... Whoa. <laughs> you lost your privilege, my friend. But he did uh, echo the point. He's ancient. The guy's turning to dust as we speak. Oh, see ya, see ya, Rasheen. Got some, um, you got some man. Mathis on you. Uh, no, he's old. So, I mean, he's still very productive last year for being, you know, dirt. However, I think big place like Darius has a step up this year. Uh, and I think he did a really good job in the second half last season. First half, definitely too much hype. I think he was very cocky. Um, but once he calmed down a little bit and realized, I need to just shut my mouth and go out there and perform. Now he's already started to run his mouth. Although it was more of an excitement when he was talking about Antonio Brown. Because let's be honest, Brown versus Slay, Brown's winning every battle. Yeah. Uh, however, in the practices uh, and the few times they lined up against each other, uh, Slay held his own. Brown did, I'd say, come out on top, but Slay did hold his own. Uh, it, it's going to be fun to watch. I'm always excited when football season starts. Yes. Um, and then last year we was very quick to not be excited. <laughs> what, they start 0-7 last year, 0-8? It was pretty cool. Yeah, I think it was 0-8. So, I mean, it's real quick. We could be excited and then ready for the season to be over real soon. But as of right now, I'm pumped for the Lions to start. Yeah, and college I'm more football is excited I don't have season tickets this year. No. So I can enjoy, hey, halftime, let's flip on a real team. I don't have to just gut through and drive back from the D and go to the bar and drink my sorrows away. I don't do that anymore. I've matured. 
You can laugh all you want at home. Edna, I hear you. You're laughing. That's fine. See you at Hamlin tonight. <laughs> uh, another thing I want to talk about real quick. That's all the Lions. <laughs> Let's not get crazy. <laughs> the Red Wings Youth Summer Camp, Dan, just wrapped up. Yeah, fantastic. Let me tell you, it was a great time. I was lucky enough to be a part of that. Coach Nick was there. That's me. What's up? I was teaching your children. Go on Facebook. You can America. see a video of him taking care the of the youngsters. Of hockey. We'll teach you dangles. We'll teach you snipes. We'll teach you sellies. I had to show a couple kids what a four-minute double minor for high sticking was because they acted out of line. Uh, if you don't know what it is, Google it. <laughs> and press your charges afterwards. Uh, but it was Talk a lot of fun. Lawyer. We traveled the state of Michigan. Started up in Traverse City down to Cadillac. Uh, Mount Pleasant, Lansing, Grand Rapids, Holland City, Kalamazoo, uh, Ann Arbor, Allen Park, and Fraser. So a uh, lot, 10 stops along the way, a lot of fun, well done by the team, and uh, I'm happy that they asked me to join them. Yeah, yeah, that, that's terrific. Sounds like a lot of fun. Um, Damn. And you're supposed to go out and have fun with all these kids, and it's a sport you love. And what did I do? I did it. I lived it, Dan. I taught Dan a few moves, so uh, don't mess with them in the streets. Yeah, that's it. That's all the time we got. Uh, me and Dan are going to go locker box. See ya. <laughs>